Muslims experience a unique season of celebration from April 12th to May 12th, a month-long observance consisting of religious, cultural, and social activities that Ramadan represents. Muslim athletes are expected to fast from sunrise to sunset each day throughout the 30 days, all the while training in their respective sport throughout. Uh, during the year, we, uh, we're all grateful to have food, water, and pretty much everything that we need to be healthy and alive. So during this month, Muslims are uh, getting together and pretty much not eating and drinking throughout the day to be grateful for what we have. Um, it's a time of month where we reflect on ourselves and to see uh, like what's going on around the world, how people don't have food, they have less than us. And it's a time where we give back to them and we always donate during this time of year. So in like all my years of coaching, I don't think we've ever had you know, a situation where we've really had to accommodate, you know, religious observances this way. You know, we've had, you know, athletes celebrate certain holidays, mispractice or things like that, but we've never had to like navigate our, you know, a month long schedule around, you know, a religious, um, you know, a religious custom that, you know, a student athlete wants to follow during that time frame. Operating as a student athlete, days can typically be packed with practice, lift, class and a job. Operating as a Muslim student athlete gives this a whole new meaning. So it pretty much starts at like 4 a.m. pretty much. Uh, so I wake up to, that's when we all eat. It's called suhoor. That's when uh, you stuff your belly till you can't walk at that point. But uh, yeah, so we eat during that time. Uh, and then that's also when our first prayer is. So that's when we read our prayer. And then right after that, we go to sleep. And when I wake up, it's already time for class. So I attend class and then right after that, I get some work done, get some homework done. And I also have to go out for work after that. So once I go out for work, I come back home and by the time it's uh, around like five-ish, so that's when I head out to the gym and get a workout in. Uh, by the time I finish my workout, that's when it's time to eat. Observance for Sufyan and his family starts as early as 4 a.m. So by the time the sunset rolls around, he's ready to refuel after neither drinking nor eating throughout the day. I get home at like around eight and then we, that's when we break our fast, which is called iftar. So yeah, in the evening, my mom's cook like traditional foods, uh, foods that we've been eating since we were kids, since uh, they've been eating since they were kids. And then uh, we go out to pray, come back to eat a little more. And then after that, we head out to the mosque. Um, in the mosque, we pray together as a group. And it's also a time where we get together with our uh, Muslim community as well, uh, like talk about the religion, and just also enjoy ourselves as well. Um, right after that, I come home and I always get in my run. Uh, either I get in my run at home or I come to school for a workout. And then right after that, I go to sleep because I have to wake up at four o'clock and restart my day. As if being a college student athlete doesn't have its own set of challenges, Sufyan has had to adapt and adjust his regular schedule to incorporate his religious observances. So I think probably his challenge is different than the challenge that I observe, right? So his challenge normally is, you know, you get to run with everybody. Now he's got to do it solo. He's got to be accountable solo, you know, for an entire month. The challenge that I viewed was my concern more for like his health and trying to perform at a high level and navigate, you know, his his customs. So how do we allow him to continue to train and perform at a high level while not dehydrating him, while not digging him into a nutritional hole that he can't climb out of, right? That was that was my biggest concern looking at it from that aspect. And then so from more from like an energy management standpoint. Physically, I get hungry and thirsty throughout the day, but that causes me to emotionally feel grateful and it makes me feel grateful for what I have throughout the year. It makes me feel happy that I have all these kinds of food, all this, like everything I need to be healthy and happy. When it comes to questions about Ramadan, Sufyan takes it as an opportunity to share his experiences and its importance to him with his teammates. Like all throughout my life, uh, people have always asked me, oh, why do I celebrate Ramadan? Or why do I not eat? And then they always ask, oh, not even water. And then uh, it gives me the opportunity to teach them about Islam and why we celebrate Ramadan. And it's a time of month of self-reflection. And when I tell them that, I guess it opens their eyes as well as to why we do it and as to why we see it as like a good reason for to celebrate it. 
the mental discipline that it takes, you know, to know what you have to do and to um, say that you're going to do this, you know, for your religious reasons. I think that same mental discipline carries over to sport. It carries over to job, it carries over to life. And so I think it's something that's just going to strengthen him as an athlete now that we've kind of, you know, that, I mean, he's been doing it for his whole life. I just, this happens to be the first year I'm doing it with him, right? So it's new for me, but it's not new for him um, and his family. So um, I think he's doing a great job with it. Luckily, Sufyan is not alone in this special time for Muslims around the world. So I watch a lot of basketball and I know in the Portland Trailblazers, Enos Kanter and Yusuf Nurkic, they both fast and they always post on social media about them fasting and they break fast during the game. And it just inspires me as well. Like just like be determined and keep trying to push to the highest level because if they can do it, I can do it too. Uh, it makes me feel proud of my religion because it shows that, you know, no matter what who we are, what team we play for, at the end of the day, we're all the same and we come together and share a beautiful moment together. Um, I've been impressed by the way that he's handled it. You know, uh, he's not the type of athlete that's going to complain about having to navigate all this. He's just kind of figuring it out. You know, he's kind of approaching it in a very like, I think, healthy way in that well, this is something I want to do. And so we're going to figure out how to do it. This is the first time that a Muslim student athlete at Adelphi is willing to share their experience. For Sufyan, he's grateful for the chance to show the Adelphi community his dedication to his religiosity. I think it's a unique moment to be a student athlete and to be able to express what we do during this month. Uh, you know, not a lot of people get the opportunity or the platform to just share what they do during the month of Ramadan. And being a student athlete at Adelphi just gives me a platform to express my religion, be proud of my religion, and sh show the world like who I am.